Section 2. The region of the Great Plains extends through the central continent of the United States, from Canada to Mexico. The Indian Removal Act of 1830 designated the Great Plains as permanent Indian territory. The Kansas-Nebraska Act was created in 1854 to allow European settlers into the territories of Kansas and Nebraska. Then came the Homesteader Act of 1862, which settled most of the Great Plains by Europeans and freed slaves. Settlers could claim up to 160 acres of unoccupied public land for a nominal fee, given they would live on the land for a period of five years. The Homesteader Act left only Oklahoma as permanent Indian territory. By 1890, most of the Western Indian tribes agreed to an allotment of 160 acres per Indian man, woman, and child, and all other lands would be opened up to homesteaders. The Indian Appropriation Act, called the Springer Amendment, was then passed by Congress, which authorized European settlers into the oil-rich lands of Oklahoma. It is estimated that by 1900, about 80 million acres had been distributed. In 1880, the population of the Great Plains was estimated to be at 800,000 and exploded to 5.6 million by 1930. On the Great Plains, farmers grew more cotton, wheat, and corn than the market was willing to consume or export, and prices fell. Commodity traders inundated the U.S. East Coast industries and markets with European goods until prices hit rock bottom by the early 1930s. Cotton, one of the staple crops of the southern Great Plains, for an example, sold for 36 cents per pound in 1919, dropped to 18 cents in 1928, then collapsed to a dismal 6 cents per pound in 1931. The Commodities Exchange Act of 1936 set forth a regulatory framework to facilitate honest and fair practices for trading agricultural products. It was designed to stop the manipulation of the Commodities Exchange facilitated by the robber barons in the 1920s and 1930s. A combination of severe drought and man-made economic depressions created destitute among the Great Plain farmers. Millions of desperate people took to the roads seeking relief in California. The Dust Bowl physically involved the removal of the surface soil layer, making the land no longer support agriculture or natural vegetation. Once the topsoil is removed, the land loses any agricultural value. The Dust Bowl effects of the Great Plains were first documented as early as 1911, which included strong winds and extremely long cold winter, accompanied with a drought. These effects were sporadically seen at first and did not become epidemic until the entire region until 1927, noted by the Woody Guthrie song back in 1927. Throughout Northern Europe and Asia, the effects of the Dust Bowl conditions were already being documented. Food relief was sent to both Europe and Russia prior to the onset of the American Dust Bowl. These food shipments were organized by a geologist, Herbert Hoover, which would later become the 31st president. Oil production of Oklahoma began in 1901, and in 1907, Oklahoma became a state. The Northern Texas oil boom initiated with the discovery of the Electra oil field in Wichita Falls in 1911. Between 1911 and 1920, large oil fields were discovered in northern Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. Texas oil fields included Ranger, Breckenridge, and Burbrick. Large oil fields in Oklahoma include Crushing, Hellington, Garber, Heward, and Burbank. 
Oil fields discovered in Kansas included Augusta and El Dorado. By 1920, 56% of U.S. crude oil was being provided by the Mid-Continent Great Plain region. In 1920, Charles N. Gouin, a Oklahoma State geologist, discovered the largest oil field in Texas and the Oklahoma Panhandle. The discovery of oil was in the legendary Permian Basin Rock Formation. An oil rush in the Permian Basin began in Mitchell County, Texas, with the completion of Santa Rita No. 1 well. These oil fields could easily be tapped by any local homestead or property. Acquisition of all properties was required in order to secure the financial investment. The colossal American gas and oil companies, including Standard Oil and Phillips Petroleum, developed from their stake in the Permian Basin Rock Formation. Standard Oil Company was founded by John D. Rockefeller and major shareholders which included most of the railroad owners. Standard Oil was later named Mobile Oil and then merged to become ExxonMobil. Standard Oil made Rockefeller a billionaire and eventually the richest man in modern history. In 1927, Phillips Petroleum opened its first Texas refinery and fueling station in Wichita, Kansas. Its stock reached $32 a share prior to the 1929 stock market crash and $3 a share following the crash. During World War II, Phillips Petroleum prospered and later survived a hostile takeover by T. Boone Pickens. President Hoover and Secretary of the Treasury Andrew William Mellon were the primary political figures that orchestrated the Holocaust of 7.5 million Americans. They made the robber baron industrialists richer with greater control over every aspect of public, private, social, and religious sector. The robber barons included John D. Rockefeller, Cornelius Vanderbilt, Andrew Cargany, Grenville Dodge, Leland Stanford, and Hopkins, and banking giants such as J.P. Morgan, Andrew William Mellon, and media magnates such as William Randolph Hearst. The fact that Mellon was a robber baron and controlled the world's largest financial market was like boarding a fox in the hen house. It would make more sense to assume Mellon ran the presidency of the United States and Hoover was a hired executioner. Andrew William Mellon, 1855 to 1937, Secretary of Treasury from 1921 to 1932, robber baron industrialist, concentrated in the financial industry. Mellon became one of the wealthiest robber barons in the United States. In 1920, he paid the third highest income tax behind John D. Rockefeller and Henry Ford. President Hardin, in 1921, appointed Andrew Mellon Secretary of Treasury. He served for almost 11 years through the Coolidge administration, the stock market crash of 1929, and most of the Hoover administration. Herbert Clark Hoover, 1874 to 1964 was